If you've used the TPE web app uh, recently, you might have noticed one change uh, in in the app. Um, when you drag the time slider, you're now going to see some additional uh, lines in the circle. Now, you may have come across these before because previously, if you held the shift key down whilst dragging the time slider, uh, this was already displayed. So this isn't new functionality, but the way in which it is uh, shown has, has been changed. Um, rather than having to hold the shift key down, which not everybody knew about or was able to discover, uh, we now show this additional information uh, whilst you drag the slider. So I'm going to tell you what that is and what you're looking at and, and why you might find it useful. Um, for the purposes of this demo, we are in the Bonville Salt Flats of Utah, which is, as you may know, one of the, uh, the flattest places on Earth. And there's a reason for that, because we're going to talk about shadows, um, which is what this additional information is primarily about. And the shadows are really as cast on flat ground, um, which is an important caveat for you, for you to know about when, when using this functionality. Um, a shadow cast on a downsloping hill will tend to be longer than one cast on a, a hill that is sloping upwards, um, just by, by way of uh, simple geometry. Um, so these lines are really um, for shadows as cast on flat terrain, which this is. Um, so some basics first. You, you'll be familiar, I, I imagine, with the um, the rise in the set lines that TP shows. That's the thick orange uh, and blue lines with uh, moonrise and sunrise to the east and uh, sunset and moonset to the west. And then these thinner lines that you see are uh, the current position if you were to stand at the red pin and look outwards, it says which direction would you look in to look at the sun or the moon. And if I move the time slider, those lines move with time, which is as you'd expect. If I advance time, um, ignore this the, the new lines, I'm going to tell you what those are in a moment, but you'll see that the sun and the moon progress from east to west um, during the course of the day towards sunset. So let's talk about what these additional lines are. As I'm adjusting the time slider, you'll see um, there are four new lines and a circle that are shown. I'll tell you exactly what those are. Um, first of all, the thin orange line is the projection of sunlight um, past the red pin. So basically it is the direction in which a shadow would be cast um, based on the sun here in the uh, the southwest and it's shining across the red pin and the shadow is cast towards the northeast. Similarly for the moon at this particular time of month. Um, so the thin orange and blue lines are the direction in which shadows are projected. Now obviously a shadow from the moon you're only going to see on a, um, a, a, a at night and when the moon is relatively full. Um, so th that's primarily for, for night photography, or it, it can be used for alignment purposes as well. Um, the, the thicker lines, if you watch as I move towards sunset and moonset, they're getting slowly longer, as you can see there. So essentially what this is showing you is um, relative shadow length for time of day. The, the longer this thick brownish line, the longer the shadow is cast by the sun. The longer the thick blue line, the longer the shadows, or the notional shadows, cast by the, the moon. Watch one other thing. As I progress towards sunset, you'll see that the sh shadows lengthen quickly. And at this point, you'll see the circle has turned orange. So let me explain what that is. This circle is um, of an arbitrary size. It, it doesn't, it's not a fixed dimension. It's simply something that fits in the dimension of the size of the map, as, as shown. Um, and the size of the circle that's, that's displayed and the length of the line is calculated such that when the end of the, the tip of the shadow line, right there, is the length the, or the radius of the circle, that is when the sun is approximately six degrees um, above the horizon. And six degrees above the horizon corresponds typically to when you're going to start getting good light for landscape photography. So deep shadows, more golden light, uh, golden hour, if you will. I don't particularly love that term, but a lot of people use it and are familiar with it. Um, and so 
for TPE we say when the sun is between the horizon and plus six degrees, we'll call that golden hour. Um, it's consistent with uh, the definitions of twilight, which is when the sun is uh, civil twilight, when the sun is um, at the horizon to minus six degrees, that's civil twilight. Minus six to minus 12 is nautical twilight. Minus 12 to minus 18 is astronomical twilight. So we're using the same sort of six degree spacing for the purposes of our, our definition, definition of golden hour. Um, there is no scientific definition of the term. It's sort of a, a, a colloquialism, if you will. Um, so we use that definition. So what, what you're saying is when the the sun's shadow line is outside the circle, you're in golden hour. You're probably going to get good light. You're probably going to see nice deep shadows that will bring out the relief in, in the terrain. Obviously not in this location because it's flat. Um, I'll go back to dawn and you'll see similar effect. And here the moon goes outside the circle. We don't change the color of the circle for the moon um, being below six degrees. Uh, in the sky, but it can be interesting to know when the, the moon is low in the sky because two things. One, you get the um, horizon illusion uh, where the, the moon can have the sense of appearing larger when it's closer to the horizon, typically because you're juxtaposing it or able to juxtapose it with um, ob man-made objects or objects for which you know the scale, like a, a you know tree, something like that. And with a telephoto lens, it can look nice and large. Um, in addition, when the moon is close to the horizon, just as the sunlight becomes more golden, so does moonlight. It appears that nice straw yellow color. Um, again due to uh, the scattering effects of, of the atmosphere and uh, refraction. So uh, that's what this circle and these shadow lines are. You'll see them as you adjust the timeline. When I release uh, the time they disappear and we're back to the default display, they appear when moving. If you keep the slider held down as I was doing in this demo, um, then they'll stick around and when you let go, they're gone. Like that. That's it. Thanks for watching.